Okay, how did Great Britain rule her colonies? Uh, we were looking yesterday at uh, how she ruled herself, and uh, unless this is first period, which we got a little bit further, uh, we're now going to be looking at how Great Britain ruled her colonies. Now, one of the things they're going to do is they're going to think of the colonies. Great Britain was the home country, and then we have the 13 British colonies. Uh, it's kind of like thinking of a parent thinking of their children. Um, because the home country was the parent country, so that's Great Britain. Uh, and then the 13 British colonies are the children. And so she's going to make some good decisions. She's going to make some bad decisions. But flat out, she's just going to make some decisions for the colonies. I'll try and warn you before we go on, but you will need to pause this at the end because I probably won't speak long enough for you to write all these notes down. Um, one of the ways that Great Britain rules her colonies is the colonial charters. Now, a charter gives that colony the legal right to exist. It's official permission is what it is. Um, but uh, not only do you get official permission, you also have certain rights or powers that are specifically listed in the charters. Now, some of these rights are things such as the right to make laws, as we see right here, uh, the right to levy taxes, which means raise taxes, or you need money, you need revenue to run a, uh, a colony, just like you need money to run a, uh, a country. And so you're going to need that. I use the word levy here because the word levy means raise. And, and that's a word that you may see later on. Uh, so you want to be aware of that. And so if the word levy means raise taxes, then levy a militia means raise a militia or call men to arm. Now, I've told you guys before, one of the things that I love about teaching this age is the fact that you guys are going from being a child to being an adult. You are not there yet. It is a process. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's what you're going through. Well, the colonies were doing the same thing. I mean, look at what we have here, the right to make laws. Uh, just as, as you're growing up, you're going to be making some of your own decisions. And when you start making all of your decisions, and you are responsible for those consequences, that's part of growing up. Uh, the right to levy taxes. Um, this is important because everybody needs money. Uh, right now, my kids get 10 bucks a, a week. And we do that very deliberately because it's real easy for them to see. That $1 goes to the church because that's 10%. $1 goes to their savings. Now, they can change those numbers. They can put more in savings if they want to. In fact, my daughter does. Um, but that's their choice. And the rest of that money is the money that they have to spend. But here's the thing. To a seven-year-old, 10 bucks is a whole lot of money. Or I guess eight bucks is a whole lot of money. But if you stop and think, how much is minimum wage right now? Minimum wage is like seven and a half bucks an hour, or 7.15 or something like that, seven and a quarter. I really don't know. <laughs> but it's, it's like seven bucks an hour. So if you work 10 hours a week at minimum wage, you're already making 70 bucks a week. That's a whole lot more money. And so the idea is uh, when you start making your own money, that's part of growing up. And then uh, this one right here where it says right to levy a militia, this is the right to defend yourself, the right to protect yourself. Now, this militia was originally designed to protect us against Native Americans in case there was an, an uprising, which there were some of those, uh, or it was to defend us against the French, but we know the French are gone by now. Uh, the French Indian War pretty much took care of that. Uh, but the right to take care of yourself. So when you look at these three, right to make laws, make your own decisions, the right to levy taxes, raise your own money, the right to levy a militia, be able to take care of yourself and protect yourself. Um, just like this is growing up for a person, this is growing up for a colony. These things, it's showing self-reliance, independence. Um, we would say this is the way you become an adult. And so that's kind of what these colonies are doing. Pause it about right now if you need time to finish writing this one down. Because I'm about to go on. Okay, here we go. The next one that we're looking at here is the Navigation Acts. And this is where Great Britain is deliberately going to try and, um, I guess, kind of keep the colonies in their place. And yes, you do want to write all this down. It's a little bit smaller, but you guys should be able to see it just fine. If you notice the way this is set up, the colonies would sell raw materials to the home country. 
Now notice that this dollar sign is much smaller than this dollar sign. And so when you're talking about raw materials, you're talking about things like lumber, iron, or cotton. Now those things, you make some money off of that, but you don't make nearly as much as you would from the finished products, which is the second point that I'm making here. The home country would sell the finished products back to the colonist. Now, notice you can only buy and sell with the home country. So you can only buy and sell with Great Britain. Now, if you'll notice this, and, and I do want you to write this down, so you may have to pause for a second to get this, get these notes written down. Um, and if you need to pause right now, go ahead and pause it. Okay. Um, I want you to write this down and point this out. Lumber from the colonies is going to become furniture in Great Britain. Then they ship that furniture back. Now, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that if I'm a lumberjack cutting down a bunch of two-by-fours or cutting down a bunch of logs and shipping them over to Great Britain, if they make that into something, a desk, a chair, bookcases, um, whatever, when they ship that back, it's going to be a whole lot more expensive than it was when I shipped the lumber over there. Um, and so what's going to happen is Great Britain's getting rich off of me. And they're not being shy about it. And that's really going to bother me. Notice when uh, I dig up iron out of the ground and we ship it over there, they're going to take that iron, they're going to make it into tools. Shovel, axes, pots, pans. And it's going to cost a whole lot more for me to buy those things. Um, cotton will become textiles. Now, that's something that always messed with my head because textiles is talking about things like sheets, shirts, pants, anything that's made from cloth. And for some reason, the idea of cloth and a word called textiles has never made sense to me. And it still doesn't. But that's what's happening. So if I ship raw cotton over to England, or Great Britain, um, and then they start shipping back shirts and dresses, coats. You know, they're making a whole lot more money off of me than I am off of them. But the, the, the problem that's really going to make this even worse is I can only buy and sell from the home country, from Great Britain, which means I have to buy from these guys right here whether I want to or not. I might get a better deal from France or Spain but it is illegal for me to do that. That's the Navigation Acts. Thank you very much to spend your time getting rich off of me. I won't cry about it at all. Well, yeah, I will. And so we have the Navigation Acts. Pause it right here if you need to. So you don't have everything written down uh, because you do want to tie raw materials to finished product. As you see from the colors here, so you do want to make sure you take care of that. So pause it for a second to make sure you have that down. Okay, our last one here, I said, oh, last one, actually, next to last one here, uh, we're talking about mercantilism. And uh, in mercantilism, um, which is kind of a strange way to say this, uh, we really don't talk about merchants anymore, but a merchant is someone who owns a business. Um, it could be a grocery store. It could be a dry cleaners. Uh, it could be anything where you buy and sell things. That's a merchant. Um, mercantilism is the idea of making money off of the colonies. Now, it's real simple. It basically boils down to this. The more money I have, the more power I have, let's go make some money off of the colonies. Because once again, we already have the Navigation Acts going, so they're already pretty much there to help enrich Mother England. And uh, there's a scene I want to show you. I don't know how well this is going to come through, but I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, that comes from uh, Happy Gilmore. And I want you to look at it because we figure out real quickly that we're being used here. And this is what I call the my fingers hurt scene. Uh, you're going to see Ben Stiller and he's going to represent Great Britain. And then you're going to see the old people here in the scene and uh, this is going to represent the American colonists. I guess a nice way of putting this thing is elderly people, but you get the idea, which is pretty much what I'm going for. So let me see if I can get this up here so you can understand this. Okay, this is a scene that I was talking about. I'll try and show you. This is my the, my fingers hurt scene. 
Um, but I really want you to pay attention to how it would have felt to have been one of the elderly people in the scene. Because they're being used, and they know it. I don't know how well this is going to come across. Uh, we're going to give it a shot. Uh, hopefully it works. Yeah, best of luck. Marty, if you'd stop yapping your trap for a second, I can tell you. The price is $200 per quilt. Yeah, these are some really high-quality quilts we have here. What do you need to buy? All right. Good doing business with you. Okay, listen up, everybody. Turn up your volume. It's announcement. I got good news. We're extending arts and crafts time by four hours today. My fingers hurt. What's that? My fingers hurt. Oh, well, oh. now your back's going to hurt because you just pulled landscaping duty. Hmm. Anybody else's fingers hurt? I didn't think so. Why do you do that to me, huh? What do you make me act like that in front of everybody, huh? Mr. Gilmore! Hey, Toity, straight down to the right, dear. How's my grandma? Oh, she's super. We're just enjoying some arts and crafts time right now. Grandma's quite a quilter. Hey! Wow, that's a tremendous looking trophy. Happy. Uh, I'm so glad to see you. I'm glad to see you too, Grandma. I've been thinking about you all the time. Looks like everybody's having fun here, huh? <laughs> Grandma, good news. I made the professional golfer's tour. That's lovely, dude. Yeah, it is lovely. You know what else is lovely? If I can figure out a way to beat those other guys, we're going to get the house back. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I can't stand to live in this place another minute. What are you talking about? I thought you liked it here. That orderly guy seems very nice. Don't you like him? Oh, I do. I do. It's just, uh, well, the air conditioner's broken. Uh, I'm getting a little warm. Well, just let the kid fix it for you. <sighs> All right. Got the little twisty knobs. That ain't doing it. All right. Okay, uh, I know I went a little bit further than I had to there, but uh, <laughs> I'll be honest, that Mr. Mr. part really cracks me up. So hopefully you liked it too. But let's get the point here. The point is they felt like they were being used. And they were. The Ben Stiller character in that movie, the orderly, he's making money off the older people in that nursing home. It ain't right. That's what he's doing. Pause it here if you need to. Make sure you have the notes written down and make sure you've got this stuff here. Okay, the last thing we need to make a note of here was the idea of salutary neglect. Uh, salut salutary neglect simply means that Great Britain left the colonies alone. Just take care of yourself as long as you're not causing a problem, don't need anything, you're just kind of left alone. And uh, we got used to being left alone. And so when King George III and Parliament start stepping in with all these new laws, telling us what we can and can't do, um, it really hits us the wrong way. You see, before about the mid-1700s, Great Britain kind of just left us alone. Uh, but we are going to see that now they're going to really kind of jump in here. Now, one exception here is that they literally said that you had to allow slavery in all 13 colonies. And, um, which is kind of a weird thing to stipulate, saying that you have to allow slavery, but they did. Um, and so slavery... Up until at least the uh, the end of the American Revolution, slavery is legal in all 13 colonies. Okay, please pause it here until everyone has uh, written the notes. So go ahead and write these suckers down, and I'll give you your very brief instructions on your assignment. Because it'll be very brief assignment and very brief instructions. Okay, this is your 91 second quick write. So you can see the instructions here. Uh, you'll take out a blank sheet of paper. Do not pull it from your notebook. I'd rather give you paper off the front counter. Um, Y'all know how to do that. Put your name, class, date at the top. Your title is Why the British Colonists Get Mad. And I guess we need to change that to an S there. Okay, Why the British Colonists Get Mad. <laughs> I guess we should. Well, I'm all over the place here. Okay, now I'm going to have to pause this because I'm running out of time. Please notice, 91 seconds. Do not begin until the teacher says start, and when the teacher says stop, you end immediately. 